Stormers came through a pulsating and very entertaining semi-final against Connacht. On its mark, let's talk rugby. Connacht started some really well. They're applying pressure on the Stormers who have the ball in their own half but are getting forced back. Eventually then Dweber knocks on and gives them a scrum in the Stormers 22. Connacht win a penalty at the scrum as Malherba goes to ground and and then Carty splits the post. Connacht leads 3-0. Connacht then win another penalty when Buckley is tackled off the ball by Engelbrecht, but Carty misses touch when he's kicking into the corner. Connacht then uh, keep kick deep. It's a decent kick from Blade and Niall Murray gets their first. He kicks it on and Stormers manage to get to the ball and referee says it's a goal line drop out. It looked like the Stormers player maybe didn't get it down and he felt the same and then he kicked it clear which would have actually been a better one than the goal line drop out but then Kitsoff wins a penalty at the breakdown of Stormers were able to clear properly. Connacht, though, continue to apply pressure with the Stormers again in possession in their own 22. Leboc drops a pass and then Willemse knocks on behind his own line. Line, It's a five-metre scrum to Connacht. Prendergast goes from the back of the scrum. Then they go to one-out runners, forward trucking it up. Blade then gets the ball to Carty and he gives a really long pass uh, out to the left to Hansen, who goes over in the corner. Nice dive to finish from him. Conversion is missed. We're at 8 0, and it's been all Connacht so far. Stormers, though, finally offer something going forward. Here's some great carries from the likes of Kitsoff, Willemse, and Roos. They've got penalty advantage, but Leboc cross kicks to David, who ca- he catches it and then dots down to score. Leboc converts from out wide, and it's 8 7. While Herba then gets pinged for not rolling away. Connacht go up the line from the penalty. They go through the phases on the edge of the 22, but Stormer's defence is solid and eventually they're able to strip Blade of the ball. Carty then drops a high ball and Hurley Langton is pretty much at the same time is pinged for being in front of the kicker, so it's a penalty to Stormer's. The box slots it and Stormer's hit the lead 10-8. Connacht then come back on attack not really going anywhere, so Carty decides to kick through. Leboc does well. First of all, sells a dummy, steps the chasers, and then kicks back downfield. A Halloran, he manages to get the kick after his bounce a couple of times, but um, he kicks clear. Stormers go quick from that. They break up the left wing. Yanchis then puts Leboc under the post to score. Leboc converts his own try, and it's 17 8 and really big turnaround for the Stormers. Van Herden then is offside and it's a chance for Connacht to hit back but again Carty kicks it dead as he goes for the corner. Stormers then win a penalty at the scrum back and they kick it into the Connacht 22 and strike from the resulting line out. They put Davids or sorry, Davids through a gap. He rides the tackle over Halloran who has to then go off after that. We don't see him again for the rest of the game and he puts Leboc over for his second. Leboc again obliges from the tee, and it's 24-8. Such a massive, you know, change there from, you know, within a minute of Connacht potentially scoring in the corner of one end if Carty makes, you know, that kick properly to instead Stormers going in under the post. And, yeah, a really costly error for them. And I thought overall, you know, Blade and Carty, you know, they had some flashes where they were decent, but overall were pretty poor today, which is unfortunate because both of them have had great seasons. From here then, Connacht um, do manage to respond off the back of a scrum. Farrell makes a great break up the middle, deep into the Stormers territory. It's recycled. Buckley then finds Oliver, who fights his way first over the line and then fights to get it down to the ground as well. It's right before half time and the it's very windy and the wind blows the ball off the tee. 
Carty is putting it back on when one of the Stormers players comes and picks it off the tee. Referee said that he already started his run up, so it was fair enough and it's no conversion. 24 13 is our half time score. We then have an error spoons start to the second half. First, the Stormers get ping for crossing. You know, they spoil a, a very promising counter attack. Then Carty uh, kicks dead right down the middle of the pitch into that very strong wind. Stormers then uh, get pinged for taking the man out off the ball. It's Engelbrecht again. Connacht decide to go to the corner, but the line out goes awry. They do manage to, to retain the ball, but it's messy. Stormers knock it on, and it's a scrum to Connacht. Connacht then attack off the back of the scrum. We have some good carries from Dowling, Heffernan, and Oliver. They're a few minutes or meters, sorry, short, and they've got penalty advantage. Then Hurley Langton manages to ground on the line to give Connacht hope. The um, referee goes up to the TMO just to to make sure he's seen the grounding, but the um, replays are inconclusive. But he's asked, you know, for any reason not to w- award the try on field decision is try so. Stick with that. It's converted, and we're at twenty four twenty. Connacht re- doing really well to come back within four points. But if they played, you know, um, better and maybe with more composure early on, they wouldn't have had to try and come back in the first place. Oliver then gets himself pinged for taking Leboc out late after a kick. Stormers go into the corner, but then they overthrow. Carty gets there first, and he's able to clear. Wilmsa then takes Carty out in the air, and Connacht kick to the corner. Connacht have the momentum, but it's Stormers who score next. They um, get the ball to Nell on the edge. He then puts Yanchis away on the wing. He draws the cover and sends the wet o- uh, over under the post. Nabok converts it, and it's 31-20. And it feels like a very significant score, given how tight the game was, and you know, um, given that there's not that much time left in the game. Nabok then has a chance to leave Connacht, needing two converted tries just uh, to even get a draw out of the game. But he misses... Um, from the tee for the first time on the day. Connacht then have a chance to keep up the line after Kitsoff is offside at a ruck, but um, they're usually reliable line-out malfunctions. And, you know, that's kind of the story really of Connacht today. A lot of the things that they've done well this season are just not going for them at all when they really need it. Stormers are able to clear, but then Porch kicks an amazing 50-22 to give them another chance, but time really is running out. Connacht um, go to the backs of the line-out, some great handling, and then Farrell puts Ralston over in the corner. Tom Daly misses the touchline conversion at 34, or th- sorry, 31-25. Stormers then, from there, they seal the win. It's basically like a nothing kick up the middle of the field. There's no real chase on it, but Daly spills a very kickable catch, and then Diamani gets to the ball first. He kicks it uh, forward. It kind of skews to the right, but it rebounds off a kind of player and um, kind of makes a triangle and comes back into his hands. He then breaks and he's able to um, offload, and he puts to unison over to seal the win. The conversion's missed. We're at 36-25, but then there's still time for a piece of magic for, from Diamani. He gathers a cross with kick in the 22, gives an amazing behind-the-pack back offload to Nell, who crashes over to score. Our final score is 43 43- 25 stormers advance to the final now let's have a quick look at some of the stats from the game so we start with the attack tries six to four for 
uh, the Stormers, like those two late tries, really did seal it because it was very close. You know, otherwise, possession 29 to 71. Connacht with lots of the ball, but that Stormers defense was just immense and denying them any real, you know, uh, breaks for much of the game and also applying a lot of pressure as well. Clean breaks, you can see from that as well. Eight to the Stormers and five to Connacht. Connacht finding it very hard to break the line. Defenders beaten 26 from Stormers, 25 from Connacht. And offloads, 12 from the Stormers and three for Connacht. Some of the offloads from the Stormers led directly to tries as well and, you know, really did make a difference. Territory then, 33%, 67. Connacht in position, but found it really hard to, you know, break down that Stormers defence. And, you know, um, it really was a pity that the there were so many malfunctions, especially at halfback. I thought Blade looked rather ponderous, you know, uh, at the base of the rook, waiting for players to get into position and not really uh, kind of, you know, driving the play forward. Number of tackles then, 179 to 59, just, again, you know, talks about to that amazing defensive shift that Stormers put in. Missed tackles, 25 to 26. And then, you know, tackle success, 88% for Stormers is, is very good. 69 for Connacht is poor like very poor. Generally, you're expecting tackle success to be, you know, at minimum low 80. So 69 really is a bad return for them. Turnovers one then, two for the Stormers and one for Connacht. Kicking, um, kicks retained, six for the Stormers, three for Connacht. And uh, kicking success, again, I talk about this every time because it's on there. This stat is, is complete bull. It's wrong. I don't know why they don't fix it or take it off one way or the other. Penalties conceded then, 10 for the Stormers, 6 for Connacht. Penalties conceded, like, you know, 4 um, extra for Stormers. A lot of the time could actually be the difference in the game, but Connacht kicked two of those dead and you know, didn't really take advantage of that. In terms of then uh, the teams from here, so Connacht thought they started really well, um, but that very costly 20-minute period where they just completely imploded, just left them with too much to do. They did do well to come back, you know, to put in four points, but it was a big ask for them to come over the top of the Stormers from there. Just too many errors. And, you know, that great halfback pairing that has got them to this stage, you know, all through the season. And then also, like, you know, some other things like line out malfunctioning at the wrong time as well, um, you know, really did cost them today. They did really well to make it to the semi final. Now we're going to see, you know, next season how they go um, with Pete Wilkins stepping up to the head coach role. Stormers um, pretty much won this with their defense, denied Connacht, you know, go forward at crucial points, and then uh, being able to exploit errors and turnovers was, you know, really key for them. Also, the box kicking from the tee ensured that they stayed that just that little bit of front of Connacht when it was tight. And I think, you know, it's fitting that they get to defend the title now in the final.